Hey, my name is Terry, and in the uh, app it says Terry English. It wasn't a mistake, it's a very unfortunate surname. Um, but I live in the Czech Republic. I've lived in the Czech Republic for 25 years. Dobry den, no nazdar. And I thought I would go there for one year to serve the Lord faithfully for one year, and then I'll do what I want to do. Uh, and 25 years later, I'm still there. <laughs> And now I'm doing what I like to do. So I, I'm, I'm blessed that at some point God asked me to do something. I said yes. And I'm so thankful that I did. Um, and the reason why I'm... Oh, oh, wait. I'm doing the wrong workshop. <laughs> no, so, no the, reason, the reason why I'm, I'm doing this workshop is um, I've had a lot of different... I, I'm originally a youth worker. Um, you can tell by the hair. Um, but as, my, as organizations that I was involved in running grew, I had to learn how to lead. Um, and especially my, the advantage I have over many people is um, I've led all generations. Um, and so I've been able to even see how leadership has changed and how people respond to leadership in different ways. And most recently, uh, my role has been to help our organization. We have 350 staff. Um, reevaluate or create a new leadership culture for all of our staff that we can all agree this is a good culture, this is something that we all agree to and we can all grow together. And uh, what I'm going to present to you is really a flyover of what some of that is. Okay, it's a flyover. It's not going to be very, very deep. One final thing I will say is um, the way ELF usually wants uh, the speakers to speak is that we speak for 30 minutes or an hour, or however long, and then at the end you have some time for questions. So I'm much more interactive. I'm not leaving you lots of time for questions at the end because we'll be talking all the way through, and you'll be talking to each other quite a lot as well. Because I think there's two people that we can learn a lot about leadership from. One is Jesus. Um, uh, is that your name? <laughs> uh, one is Jesus, and, and the other is each other. Um, we all have a lot of leadership experience, and sometimes it's like, please don't do what I did ever. I made such a fool of myself. I've made lots of mistakes, but we all can learn from each other, and we're going to be doing quite a lot of learning from each other today as well. Uh, in this uh, session, we're going to be looking at leadership. Um, I will say this right away. Towards the end, we are going to be thinking about Jesus in that equation, um, but not at the beginning. So some of you um, might be surprised that at where I come from at the very beginning. That's okay, bear with me to the very end, okay? So this is more thinking about just from a, let's, let's just say from a business perspective, but there's things that we can learn, okay? So the first thing we, I, I wanna say is we're talking about leadership, not management. Do we understand the difference? So when we think about the word management, what are some words that you think of that are connected with management? Organization, organizing, yeah. Order, Meeting. meeting, plans, the boss. sorry? The boss. Oh, the boss, yeah. yep, okay. <laughs> projects, administration. administration, and these are important things. Without these things, an organization cannot function. So it's not either or in any organization, it must be both and, but, but we are gonna focus in this um, session more on the leadership side of things. So when we think management, management comes from the, the word in Latin manus, which means to handle. And that's things like planning, organizing, staffing, budgeting, things like that. That's kind of the order of things. But we're thinking about leadership, which comes from literary, to go, to guide more human. And this is words like modeling, inspiring, challenging, enabling, encouraging. So those are the things that we're going to be thinking about. So the first thing I'd like you to do is um, now in your two, meet with another two, so a group of four, and look at this quote. I'm going to show you two leadership quotes for you to consider. When you look at this quote, uh, what are some of the things about this quote? And there's, there's lots of wonderful leadership quotes in the world. I'm just going to show two. What are some things about this quote that you would agree with or that you're like, oh, that's really interesting? Or is there anything that you're like, oh, I have a problem with that? 
Were there any thoughts in your group that you, that you all could agree on? What was, what was some, uh, I don't want to hear every opinion in the room. If you were the only person with one opinion, that's okay, bless you. But I'm trying to gather things that more people said, yeah, that's actually interesting, yeah. Yeah, no one wants to struggle. <laughs> oh, no one wants to struggle. It's like a struggle. Are you kidding? Don't make me struggle. Uh, um, let me ask you this, in your work, in your life, um, are there some struggles? Oh, yes. Are there? There, there are. Okay, yeah, especially in leadership, yes. Uh, yeah, you know, there, there are struggles and, and uh, hard things. We can choose that we want to try and do those hard things, or we can just be like, why? And what's the difference between those two things? It might be the leader. So that, that's why it's there. Because life is hard. Work is hard sometimes. So that's one reason why it's there. But yes, I completely agree with you. I don't... <laughs> in, in a job interview, they don't tell you like, oh, you're going to struggle in this job. Do you still want the job? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to really struggle with me as your leader. <laughs> I'm going to show you one other quote. By the way, has anyone heard of Jim Coons and Barry Posner? So what you might not know about them is that they uh, continue to run the world's longest ongoing study on leadership. So, so you'll, you'll hear a bit more about them in a little bit. Um, so the world's, and it's uh, 36 years old involving millions of people. So, and you're like, why do I, I've never heard of that before. So I'll share some more in a little bit. Here's one other quote, which is very similar, but has a slightly different taint to it. And this quote is uh, written by Todd Bolsinger. He released a book last year, Canoeing the Mountains, and he's a believer. So this is a book for church leaders. So can we do the same thing? Go back into your groups and just have a talk about this quote, leadership is energizing a community of people towards their own transformation in order to accomplish a shared mission in a changing world. Okay, well now one thing that's surprising for me is that very few, well, none of you mentioned in a changing world. Uh, the world is changing and that makes leadership so much fun. No, <laughs> it makes leadership harder um, and uh, surveys of business leaders, when you ask them, is leadership easier or harder now than it was 10, 15, 20 years ago, they all say it's harder mm -hmm. for a lot of different reasons. But the, 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 the answer, it is harder, is universal amongst every leader of every large organization when you ask them that question. And some organizations, in recognizing that, are completely changing their leadership cultures and what they expect of leaders. Unfortunately, we in the church are a little bit behind on that one, um, but it is harder, and that's also something to recognize. So thank you, those of you that are leading, thank you that you are willing to lead. And I hope that somebody else says thank you to you at some point as well, <laughs> but thank you. Okay, one more time of sharing with each other. Um, could you think of a time in your past uh, when you would say, this was me at my leadership best? This was me at my leadership best. I, if someone were, you know, was to ask me, is there, is there a story in your leadership journey that you're proud of? And it's okay you know, to, to say, yes, I did well here. What is that story? It, do you understand the question? Mm -hmm. yeah, what was you at leadership best? So I'm just going to give you uh, a minute to think about that. Isn't listening to each other so much more fun than listening to me? <laughs> you, so, who said yes very fast there? That was <laughs> Isn't listening to each other more fun than listening to me? Yeah. No. Hey, um, uh, I, for, many, for many years I've been a teacher. I, I love to equip and lead and educate. And one thing I've learned, people don't learn well when they're just spoken to. It's much better to talk amongst each other and process information. If, 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 so this is for any of you that's a pastor or an educator or someone that tries to teach and equip. People need to interact with, with what you're learning. And so I, that's why I'm, 
having you guys talk to each other, but also there is so much you can learn from each other. Like I happen to be learn, leading, facilitating this seminar, but I'm sure that you've learned something from each other already that I would never be able to teach you. So that's something that I think is an important reflection. And what I, I'm also sure of is that there are some similarities in your stories and in your behaviors. They might not be exactly the same because you're, it's an art. You're all different. The, your situations were different. But I'm sure that there are some similarities in uh, what you did. You might have used different words, but if you condense it down, you can say, actually, this, th these are similar. So what I'd like you to do now, you have post-it notes in your hands and you have pens back in your pairs. I would like you to write down four similarities that you had and write them in a way that they're kind of visible. So we're not thinking story, we're, th we're thinking um, two or three words that, that summarize the similarities in your behavior. I'm thinking in particular your behavior. What did you do? How did you do it? So what are some of the similarities in what you did when you were at your leadership best? So from each group, can one of you come to the front and you'll just share, these are the four things that we have. Uh, we have um, buying my team a cup of coffee. Uh, we have enabling them to do what they want to do. You know, wh whatever it is, just read off what the post-it is and put it up on the sheet. And if, when you come up, there's another post-it note on here already that's very similar or along the same theme of what you have, put them together, okay? Now, what I've just done with you uh, remember that research project I spoke about, the world's longest ongoing uh, research on leadership? Um, this is how they started. Uh, Kunz and Posner, they asked 3,000 leaders this question. When you were at your leadership best, what did you do? Tell us that story. And they analyzed that story, and out of that, they found five best practices that just came up time and time again. Five that came up time and time again. And there's different ways of expressing it. There's, you know, but, but generally, there were five themes that came up in everybody's story. And the interesting thing about this is that this research is ongoing. And just this year, they published their seventh um, edition of their findings. And the five best practices are still the same. Wow. Yes. Now, there are some interesting changes in some of the uh, things that come under some of those things, how they're expressed or things like that but the five best practices have remained the same. And this is something that's really interesting for me because there's lots of leadership fads. And you know, there's, there, I, I love reading different leadership tools. They're very helpful for certain situations. But for our organization, we've chosen these five best practices as like our operating system because these seem to be timeless. Yeah. These seem to be timeless. We can build other things on top of these and other leadership ways of thinking on top of these. But these five things are timeless as practices. And the interesting thing is, is that they, 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 together they come under this management leadership theory that's called transformational leadership. So there's different types of, I spoke about transactional leadership. I pay you, do what I ask you to do. Uh, um, there's directive leadership. I'm the boss, let me tell you what to do. There's servant leadership. I'm, I'm here to serve you and help you grow. Transformational leadership and servant leadership are very, very similar. Um, one thing that's maybe slightly different is the transformational leadership. They would say there you're still trying to help people. You're, you're helping your team reach a certain goal. It's not just only helping your team person reach their own goal. So that, that might be a, a difference between servant leadership and, and transformational leadership. So what I'm going to do now is just share what those five practices with you are. And this is the bit where I'll be doing a little bit more of the talking, unfortunately, if that's okay. But I'll occasionally ask you to talk with each other because we only have 15 minutes left. So I've been timing this well. But we've actually been learning this together. So, and by the way, if I was to stop right now and say, this, actually, this is the leadership lesson, have you learned something already? What, what have we learned? What, what came out really clear here? Cast a vision. Anything else that came out here? This, this thing here came out quite a lot. Feedback, Feedback evaluation, communication. This came out quite a lot. Team, yeah, team. And, and by the way, uh, if, if there's no one following you, you're not a leader. Uh, I actually don't like the word follower either. But you know, you're not a good leader if no one actually chooses to follow you. And this is something that's really important. Are people choosing to follow you 
or do they have to follow you? So if, you're, if they have to follow you, you're a positional leader. But I would rather be a different type of leader. I'd, I'd rather people choose to follow me. So, so these are the five best practices um, that are done by people that have people who choose to follow them. So choose to follow them is a really important word here. So the first one is model the way, oh, and look, you all taking photos of me? No. Ah! <laughs> model the way. The second is inspire a shared vision. The third is challenge the process. The fourth is enable others to act. And the fifth is encourage the heart. And some of you are asking, where is the Holy Spirit in this? Yes, I agree. So I'll say one more time, this research was um, done in the world of business, and I do have a cravat to add, to add at the very end. Okay, so I'm gonna unpack each one of these a little bit. So the first one is model the way. And with each of these practices, um, there's two commitments. And the, the English can be a bit complicated and there's a lot to remember. So I'm just gonna say this, if you, if you only want to remember one thing, just the, the words in green, okay? So model the way, clarify your own values and set the example. Clarify your values and set the example. So know what you believe in as a leader and then be the example for your team. So model the way. In other words, do what you say you will do. Do what you say you will do. Do what you say you will do. It makes you very safe if your team understand what your leadership model is and what your expectation is and that you're modeling that. So model the way. And I'm sure you could all have examples in your lives of a leader that has done this really well. They've modeled something that you said, I want to be like that. Uh, actually, Jesus, I want to be like him. Actually, let's just do this. Um, where did we see Jesus modeling the way? And what I'm not trying to do is like have a leadership, have a, a leadership theory and then like, mm, let's, let's fit Jesus into this just because we're a Christian. But we can look at these practices and say, actually, Jesus did that. There are some examples of this. So a couple of examples of where do we see Jesus modeling the way. He knew what he stood for, and he set the example. He did what he said he would do. His prayer life, His prayer life yeah. He, and he perfectly modeled dependence on the Holy Spirit, dependence on the Father. And then they asked yeah, that's a great example. The, even the modeling the dependence on the Father. And, and so they asked, teach us how to pray, because we see you do it. How can we do it? Yeah. The equality of the people. The equality of the people. Yes. Yeah, especially in that culture at that time. Yeah, he spoke to people that other people would not speak to. That he was a perfect model in that way. And especially when you imagine the people on his, his team, like Simon the Zealot, you're speaking with women? It, it, he was an amazing model in that way. This is, I, I love everybody. I'm teaching you love God, love your neighbor, and let me show you how I'm loving your neighbor. One more example of Jesus modeling the way. Doing what he said he would do. Cross. Yeah, <laughs> I am going to die, and I will rise in three days' time. And he went and did it, even though he didn't want to. He still did it. So he did what he said he would do. So he modeled the way. So that's the first practice. Here's an interesting quote. I have little idea of what my manager is interested in, believes or does. He's rarely here, and when he or she is, they're usually in their office with the door shut. Now, you might not have an office if you're like, for example, a church pastor, but are you enough with the people that you're seeking to lead that they know what your values are? Or are you behind your own office door somehow? Are you too busy to be with your team? Or are you alongside your team? Friendship came up here. But this is an interesting thing to think about. Do, do my team know what my, am I, do I have enough time with my team for them to actually understand what my values are? Am I modeling something to them? What am I modeling? So, so that's the first one, model the way. The second is inspire a shared vision. 
And again, if we want to break this down a bit more, so we're envisioning the future and enlisting others in a common vision. Inspire a shared vision. And you all know this because it came up here. But there's a really interesting word in this one. This word here, shared. A shared vision. What does shared mean? Understood and agreed. Understood and agreed. Uh-huh. Yep. That's great. Any other words that, that you can say with shared? They own it. It's, it's not just his vision, it's my vision too. It's a common, it's a commonality. So in order to get a shared vision, that's not one-way direction, that's not one-way communication. That's not, hey, I'm the leader, I've got a vision, follow me. There needs to be a discussion there. What's our vision? And for example, one easy way I, I do that, at the beginning of this week, I sat down with my team and I said, hey, at the end of this week, um, people leave our network and they say, this was an amazing week. I received exactly what I wanted to receive. What does that look like? What did they receive? And I knew what I wanted them to say or hoped that they would say, but they said it. And it was much better that they said it rather than me saying it to them. So a shared vision. One final thing I'll, I'll say with this is um, a lot of people, when you think about vision caster, who here is a good vision caster? Who here would say that they're a good vision caster? It's really interesting that only three of you put your hands up, four of you. Five, okay, some of you are like, oh, uh, okay. So when you think vision casting, oftentimes we think the person on the stage saying, this is where we're going. Because that's kind of what culture celebrates. But uh, what about the person that says, well, it's a really nice quote. There's a, um, a person that said, uh, my job is to create the environment essential for people to be healthy. So who would say that, do you think? My job is to create the environment essential for people to become healthy. Owner the owner of a hospital. Yeah, the owner of a hospital. Any other thoughts? Church. church. Pastor. Church. Pastor. Well, any leader should say that. Sorry? Any leader should say that, but who did say that? You, you see this quote in the book. Huh? A parent. My, my job is to create the environment necessary for people to become healthy. It was a hospital ward cleaner. A hospital cleaner. Now, how did that person end up with that vision for their job? That wasn't a big leader at the front saying, that, that was what? That was a conversation. It wasn't one conversation. It was a lot of conversations and a lot of good job. This is amazing. Thank you so much. Do you understand the impact you're having? That's vision casting. And we can all do that. So vision casting is not about some great and gifted leader on the stage. It's the one-on-one -on -one conversations that help people see this is what I do. This is what I can achieve. So. Inspire a shared vision. And why is this important? Well, in the Bible, we have Proverbs, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. And we know that from our own experiences. Oh, here's an interesting quote. It's people that make the difference, and when you're looking for improvements, the fire needs to be put inside of them and not behind them. Okay, next one. Challenge the process. Search for opportunities and experiment and take risks. So who likes to challenge the process? Who likes to search for opportunities and new things? Yeah, some people love it. Some people would rather not. Inertia is very safe, or it feels very safe. So, but this is important. What happens if we don't challenge the process? We stagnate. So who knows what the company Blockbusters is? Blockbusters. So they used to be the world's number one provider of uh, movies to watch at home. Uh, and um, Netflix approached them when Netflix was a small company and said, hey, we have a, a model called streaming, but we can't do this on our own. Would you like to buy us for a really ridiculously small amount of money? And Blockbuster said, no. We're Blockbuster. We're Blockbusters. And, and now what's happened? Netflix, and who's got Netflix? Everybody. Okay, who's, who goes to Blockbusters? No. Yeah, okay. This is what happens when we don't challenge the process. What about <laughs> churches? Churches are closing down. 
And why? Because this is how we've always done it. They, 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 they confuse the vision with the method. So challenge the process. But one thing about challenging the process, experiment and taking risks. Who likes to take risks? Some of you do. Who doesn't? OK, why not? It's unsafe. It's unsafe. And so as leaders, part of this, we, people will only challenge the process if we make it safe to do so. We have to make it safe to fail or to make mistakes. It's a normal part of the learning process. It's the best way to learn. Most of your leadership lessons, you learn from making a mistake and saying, I'm never going to do that again. It's normal. But we have to make it OK. So that's part of challenging the process is in making it safe to fail. So you can just call things experiments, for example. If you're going to try something new, let's call it an experiment. And if it works, fantastic. If it doesn't work, well, we learned a lesson. Ed Thomas Edison said, I've learned 17,000 ways how not to light and make a light bulb. <laughs> but then he succeeded. So here's an interesting quote. When my employees make mistakes trying to improve something, I give them a round of applause. No mistakes means no new products. And if they ever become afraid to make one, my company is doomed. That is a wise leader. Do the people we lead experience this from us? Or do you experience this? So I'm going to keep going. Enable others to act. So it was really great that one of you said actually creating partnerships, foster collaboration, connect people with each other. Who knows how uh, we choose to move forward? Three different people trying to solve a problem on their own have a statistically much lower chance of solving that problem than putting them in a room and telling them to solve the problem together. And then strengthen others by increasing self-determination and developing competence. So that means enable people to succeed. Give them the tools they need, the equipping that they need. Are we equipping our people to succeed? And then give them the trust to do what we think only we can do. Trust your team to succeed. You can do it. I don't have to do it. I believe in you. And they won't do it as well as you at first. Well, that's OK. You didn't do it as well as your boss the first time you did it. But they will become better. So enable others to act. A sign of a great leader is not how many points he scores himself. It's about how much he raises his teammates' performance. And that's multiplying leaders. One of you said here, multiplying leadership. If you want to be really, a really impactful leader, multiply leaders. A leader develops leaders, not followers. That's another interesting quote. OK, then the final thing, ah, encourage the heart. Encourage the heart. So recognize. Thank you so much. Good job. I saw that you did that. One of you mentioned, they see me. We, are, we were seen. And celebrate. Celebrate. And sometimes we just go from one event to the next without celebrating what we've done. Especially, you know, did we celebrate that we survived COVID? <laughs> or maybe we weren't kind of, I don't want to celebrate this. But actually, the fact that our churches remained open during COVID, that's something to celebrate. People came to Christ during COVID. That's something to celebrate. And let's talk about even the war in Ukraine. It's a terrible, terrible thing. But there's a renewal happening. Churches are fuller than they've ever been before. In pain, we can still celebrate. In pain, we can still celebrate. Encourage the heart. Encourage the heart. So time is up. Um, it was up 15 minutes ago. I'm going to just say one, one, one final thing, a nugget for you. Um, this is one thing that's really important. As a leader, you must stay connected to the source. That's your most important leadership behavior. Who is our source? Christ. Okay, that is your leadership behavior number one. And this, because it's a secular leadership study, this wasn't there, obviously. But this is number one for us as Christian leaders. Stay connected to the source, if nothing else. 
stay connected to the source of your leadership, of your, of your everything. And that means also, by the way, <laughs> taking a Sabbath, <laughs> having a day off once a week. That was a commandment. In the Old Testament, the commandment, uh, the punishment for not having a Sabbath is what? Death. death. And in the New Testament, uh, it's still death. It just takes a lot longer. So, <laughs> so, so, but really, you know. All right. Okay. But uh, out of this study, they also created 30 behaviors that if, if leaders do these behaviors more often, they are statistically proven to have a, more, a better impact on their team. I'm going to share the top two behaviors with you right now. So if nothing else, if you're like, well, just give me something more practical, a behavior. So behavior number one, this is how your teams need to experience you. Treat others with dignity and respect. And that comes back down to modeling the way. And, you know, as believers, I really hope that we're doing this. Love God, love your neighbor, love every, like we should be doing this. Treat others with dignity and respect, even the Pentecostals down the road or whoever your denominations, you know, you know even them. Treat others with dignity and respect. And, but, and here's the second one. And so with the 30 behaviors that they developed, what they said is leaders that exp- do these two behaviors the most often, all the other behaviors are, are, are evaluated really positively. Everything else is raised by these two things. And the second one is this. Ask for feedback on how your actions affect other people's performance. That's a really interesting, look at the phrasing there. It's not just ask for feedback. It's how do my actions impact your performance? If you do this, it's really scary to do for the first time. And then listen, don't defend. Listen, say thank you, and then reflect. What can I learn from what I've just heard? You will be an exemplary leader. You will become an exemplary leader if you do this on a regular basis.